Yo, I might get a lot of slack for making this video about this topic that I'm about to bring up. But the only reason why I'm bringing it up because it was a video that I seen last night and I thought I might want to, I guess, put my two cents into it, I guess. I don't know. Now, before I get into it, I am going to say this, that I actually did some research on this topic. want to make sure I have all the I's dot and the T's crossed. Because you know what they say. They say that us YouTubers is throwing out false and misleading information. Find out in one second. I watched this video last night about how to edit your elo he had some hours that he wanted to get back because he was on duty uh at a shipper and or a receiver or at the dock or something like that and what he did was edit his e-laws to get his hours back and i had to stop and think about that for a minute to see if that was maybe right because somebody made a comment in his feed about that he was falsifying hos service so i thought about that and i i, I made a comment on it and I, I said that i think what the new law is that you have to be on duty while you're being loaded and unloaded but you know, this is a hot topic of debate here. When I started, I was told at one time by both the trainer and the, and the uh, fleet manager that when I get to a shipper and or receiver to go ahead and log off duty while I'm being loaded and unloaded at the dock. You know, every time I get to the shipper and or receiver, I would stay on duty for like a half an hour you know so i can go in check in get my paperwork and back up to the dock and then after that i will sign off duty while they're loaded i mean while they're loading being loaded and unloaded wasn't all that bad you know maybe about two three hours being a reefer driver you know some days there's hours upon hours upon hours to being unloaded and or loaded the issue on his video he edited his video back to receive the hours that he has i guess lost while he was on duty but what he did was went back and edited it to the point that he got his hours back so is that I don't know is that kind of falsifying i guess i mean if we was told at one time that it was okay to do that is it different with different companies or is it a whole dot mandate that you have to be on duty while being backed up at a dock being loaded and unloaded so what i did was got my trusty phone out y'all see this right here i got my trusty phone out what the federal motor vehicle carrier thing says about on duty status right so I, and i'm reading word for word so that you guys don't think that i'm just blowing smoke out my ass it says right here on duty time means all time from the driver begins to work or is required to be in readiness to work until the time the driver is relieved from work and all responsibilities for performing work on duty time shall include one all time at a plant facility terminal or other property of motor carrier or shipper or on any public property while waiting to be dispatched unless the driver has been relieved from duty by the motor carrier that means once i roll up on the terminal 
or roll up on the shipper and or receiver's property, I am to remain on duty. When I did it, especially at a terminal. Now, at a terminal, I, I believe it's kind of different at a terminal because nine times out of ten, you probably might be shutting down there. So or taking your truck in to get repaired. So you don't want to be on duty while your truck is getting repaired, burning those hours. At least I don't want to be, all right? So I guess that would be the one exception for me anyway. At least with my company, they let us know right off the rip that if we come into the terminal and our trucks need to get repaired, we definitely got to go off duty. Yard drivers drive our trucks. It won't affect, that won't be a reflection on us. So, like I said, it's, there is some gray lines in there. You see what I'm saying? There is some gray lines. Number two, all time inspecting, servicing, or conditioning any motor care any commercial vehicle at any time basically what that's saying is pre and post trips inspections that's that's basically all it's saying pre-trip you got to show at least 15 minutes and the only reason why they say you have to show it which i don't think you have to show it is because the paper laws you can only do 15 minute increments on the paper law does it take 15 minutes to pre-trip and post trip your your truck some may say yes some may say no it depends pre-trip you probably want to be a little bit more observant than you are with the post number three all driving time as defined in the term driving time so you can't edit that at all you you can edit everything else but you can't edit the drive time number four all time in or on a commercial vehicle other than one time spent resting in or on a parked vehicle except otherwise provided in 397.5 of the of this subchapter number two time spent resting in a sleeper berth number three up to two hours riding in the passenger seat of a property carrying vehicle moving on the highway immediately before or after a period of at least eight consecutive hours in the sleeper berth. Basically what this is saying is that in order to ride in the passenger seat, you got to at least spend at least eight hours in the sleeper berth. Number five, all time loading or unloading a commercial vehicle supervising or assisting in the loading and unloading attending a commercial vehicle being loaded or unloaded remain remaining in readiness to operate the commercial motor vehicle or or in giving or receiving receipts shipments loaded or unloaded now Here's here's the thing with this, all right? And that's where I kind of question the fact that when he edited his laws, okay? A lot of people says, a lot of YouTubers, a lot of truck drivers says that, you know, if they're in the dock, they go off duty. You see what I'm saying? But here it says that you need to remain on duty in a state of readiness okay so i what he did on his on his laws you know what i'm saying could muddy the waters as far as oh ohs violations concerned you see what i'm saying so like i said maybe it was just the company that he works for that can that can allow him to do that i don't know but i'm just simply letting you guys know and this is from what i'm actually reading from the motor carriers website number six all time repairing obtaining assistance or remaining in attendance upon a disabled commercial motor vehicle let's say you're let's say you broke down on the road okay and you call breakdown and breakdown sends out 
road service to come and uh, and get you back on the road. Basically, what this is saying that you need to remain on duty all that time up until road service get there and until road service finish. A lot of drivers don't do that either. At least I didn't because, and I'm being honest, because I, I've been broken down many a times. And there's been plenty of times that I have went off duty while waiting for the, uh, for the road service, while getting repaired for with the road service up until they left. And then I got back on and then started driving. Number seven. It's a lot of them, y'all. Number seven, all time spent providing, providing a, oh, all time, all time spent providing a breeze sample or a urine specimen, including travel to and from the collection site to comply with the random reasonable suspension, post crash or follow up testing required by part 382 of this sub chapter when directed by a motor, motor carrier. In other words, when you go to do your DOT physical, you have to remain on duty while you're doing that. That's basically what that says. Number eight, performing any other work and capacity employee or service of a motor carrier. So let's say for example, you, you come to the terminal and the, the, the guys here ask you, hey, uh, we need you to take this driver somewhere right quick. Uh, could you do that? And if you say yes, then that's when, it's, that's when you're supposed to be on duty while doing that, even though a lot of drivers don't do that either. And number nine, well, wait. Number nine, which is the last thing, Performing any conversation work for a person who is not a motor carrier. I'm not sure about that, so I really can't go into detail about that. But when I seen the video, I, you know, I, I read the comments, and a lot of and a lot of the comments, you know, are for, you know, what he what he done. But then there's a few comments on there that says. Well, what you have done was wrong. You're giving mis you you giving misleading information. You're 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 violating uh, HOS uh, rules, um, so forth and so on. So I decided that I would come on and just you know I I decided to do a video, you know, so that you guys could, you know, maybe get both sides, you know, because maybe what he has done was maybe he got permission from his company to do it. And what I'm just coming on saying that, you know, this is from what I have read and maybe, you know, DOT standards will probably, will probably say that you can't. So, all right, guys, well, that's it. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. And I'll see you again in the next video.